keeping our water clean is important for public health as well as for the future of our planet. Heavy industry is traditionally the main cause of river contamination. But in South West Wales, around 60% of river pollution is caused by agriculture. Slurry is recognised as being one of agriculture's most common causes of pollution that affects our rivers. Our farms are expected to store more slurry for longer periods. And with changing weather patterns, because of climate change, heavy and prolonged rain leads to flooding. By 2020, the Welsh Government will be introducing new laws to combat agricultural pollution. A groundbreaking scheme is responding to this challenge. It is in the form of a partnership between Colic Sirgar and Power and Water, a company from Swansea. Simply put, 90% of slurry is water, and this project separates the water from the solids. At the RABDF Dairy Tech last year, we announced that a prototype for a machine to do this work is being developed at Gelly High Farm. By August 2018, it was up and running, and we held an open day to launch the development stage. The development of the dewatering process will take two years. We commissioned each section and each operator separately. And we developed an understanding of the slurry feedstock and the variations that arose from day to day. Firstly, we needed to remove the bulk of the solids from the water by mechanical separation. creating a solid, stackable cake. The dirty water is then added to the reactor in order to remove the nutrients in the DAF, dissolved air flotation, and Soneco, the process developed by Power & Water. The rest of the solids are then removed by disc stack. The final process is to remove the dissolved nitrogen and any poisons and bacteria in the AOP advanced oxidation process. So far, we have managed to run the whole process with minimal intervention. However, we need to improve the speed of the flow. The system was designed to treat 35 meter cube of slurry per day, which on average would be between 4 to 5 percent solids. However, a finding showed that concentration levels could reach as high as 11.4% solids. On average, the level was 5.9% solids. This huge variation affected by climatic conditions, differences in cattle bedding and feeds. We experimented with two different types of mechanical separation systems. First, a system called a screw press. On average, the solids fed to the screw press was 6.2%, with the average drop in to 5.1% after treatment. This only gives us an average removal rate of 17.1%, which is too low and creates an overloading of the downstream treatment. On the positive side, the solids that were removed were easily stackable. The second mechanical separation system is a decanter centrifuge. On average, the solids load in with 5.7% this time, and the average dropped to 2.7% solids after being treated. This gave us an average removal of 52%, which is much better than the screw press, and is likely to reduce the load on the downstream treatment. These solids were also easily stackable. The overall results showed a positive effect on the whole system when using the decanter centrifuge as opposed to the screw press. As the slurry passed through the system, the concentration is greatly reduced. Whole plant solids removal is 99.7%. 
95.8% of phosphorus, 92% of nitrogen, and 89% of potassium. This is a good start, but this water is not clean enough to be discharged to the river just yet. The general results show higher than expected fluctuations in the feed solids concentration. And the consensus is that we'll need a balanced tank to mix a small amount of dirty water with a slurry at the start of the process. We plan to make a slight modification to both the DAF and AOP tanks in order to deal with the increased solids load in. On the positive side, these early results are very encouraging and progress to date is very much in line with expectation.